Hi there, I'm Dr. Michael McVeigh. I'm from Teacher Education Department and I've been invited to show you what the uh, typical setup for the new classrooms are going to be and what some of the equipment is that you will discover in your rooms uh, in a very short time. So come on over here, I want to show you a few things. You will see some old-fashioned equipment, uh, like a screen, which you may actually have to touch and turn on yourself. The reason we have this is for the digital projector, uh, which is in many of the classrooms, not all of them, because a lot of those digital projectors are being replaced by, come on over here, an 80-inch television. Now, the reason they've chosen the 80-inch television is because you don't have to dim the lights, you don't have to worry about burned out bulbs or lamps, sorry, in the projectors. It, uh, it, it actually has a much clearer signal and the colors are sharper. And I brought a Thomas Gainsborough, and we'll take a look and see how that looks. Now, when you first come in, you're going to see uh, a switcher. This may not be the actual switcher that you uh, have, the switching box, but uh, it basically one giant start button on the screen. One button turned everything on. Now, here are a couple of the features that we have. We have a document camera. If you're familiar with document cameras, you'll understand how they work. So I'm going to put my portrait by Thomas Gainsborough. Sir, uh, Mrs. Richard Brinley, actually, is who this is. And I just want to demonstrate that you have, you have control over the lights by simply moving the handle and uh, uh, moving the light bar across. If I need to zoom in or tell the tel tel telephoto in is the T for that, it's basically is a simple matter of touching the T button on my computer, on the uh, document camera. And let's just see how closely we can get into this uh, image of a Gainsborough, right to the point that we see the, the moire patterns. But that's just a little too... That's unnecessarily close, of course. But I just wanted to give you the idea that this is how they are set up. Now let's say somebody actually wants to have the entire image on here. There is a button on the screen that says rotate. Let me give that a second. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rotate around well. You might take a little bit of practice, but I'm going to put the entire thing on in portrait, uh, or landscape mode, adjust my lighting a bit. I'm going to hit rotate, and you can see then, you now can see the entire image uh, 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 in, in portrait mode, even though it had been landscape on my document camera. Uh, another, could I take a look at a piece of text, please? Here we have. We have a piece of text. There are some, also some uh, uh, adjustment buttons. Oh, I'm, I'm still rotated. I'm going to click the rotate button again. There we go. Um, there is an, a big auto button that will uh, set up the projector so it's in the ideal setting. But there's also a button, if you take a look, for, it says text. And uh, if you're not quite happy with the way your text is looking, click that button and the, uh, the, the device will make some slight adjustments that may improve the look of your text uh, on the big screen. So let's come back over here. And oh, the other thing I did want to point out is, let's turn on the lamp again. Uh, just the clarity of that image on the large television. And what we're going to try to do is do a quick comparison. Here is Thomas Gainsborough's painting, famous painting, on the 80-inch television, and take a look at it on the digital projector. I believe the case is closed as far as I'm concerned. It's washed out um, on the uh, digital projector. If you have brought your own computer with you, your own laptop, setting it up is rather straightforward and simple. Uh, they have a cable available. It's called a VGA cable, and I'm going to try this for the first time. I brought my iPad with me. And uh, whew, let me just take it right out of the screen. And of course, I have the proper connector. This is an important thing as well. If you have a device that you, uh, in a particular laptop, and you know it has a, a funky or unusual connector, bring your own. Because I don't believe they have a box of different connectors down here. No, nope. I was, uh, I figured that one out right. And uh, I'm now going to connect this to the VGA cable, and we'll see what happens. Right. Well. When I click computer, I'm going to be actually using the computer in the classroom. When I want my own uh, computer, my own laptop, in this case my own iPad, I'll click auxiliary video and then choose laptop. My iPad right here, so it's uh, readily available uh, for, to, to demonstrate uh, things to you. Um, oh, I won't bother with any particular uh, icon right now, but or, or application, but just to let you see, it's clear. It's very clear. You, it was no muss, no fuss. I've also plugged in a little Mozart, just for fun. And I have it maximum 
volume on my, com my iPad, but what we really want to affect is this, the volume control in the classroom. There are speakers in the ceiling, and they're pretty decent. And I'm going to flip out of this for just a second and show you something else on the big screen. I'm going to show you that it's a relatively easy thing to use any of your, any of your tools, anything you can see in your in your iPad, you can see on the screen just as well. And this should be coming out just over the top of my head as well, uh, on the uh, big monitor behind me. You can really turn the classroom into an amazing multimedia event for your students with very little advanced work. If I had a video, and there are video machines underneath, I would click video and pop in my video or my Blu-ray, whatever it is that I have, and um, carry on. There's a button for Blu-ray, button for document camera, button for computer, and the computer that they're talking about is the one that's here in the classroom. Two summers ago, a number of us went to universities around Michigan and looked to see what they were doing. And one of the best things, the most interesting and helpful things we discovered was an ability to call for help. You're not alone here. Uh, in this particular classroom, we have a voice over IP telephone with a single, a one-click button to contact uh, IT help and support. Uh, in the future, there may even be a button available on the switcher. I want to tell you a secret. This is the very first time I've been in this classroom, and I was up and running in just seconds, just by a matter of pressing the start button. So fear not, it's, it works really well, and we're looking forward to having these in your classrooms everywhere. Thanks very much. Pop in and see us at the graduate school anytime. Bye-bye.